With the rise of AI agents and RAG-based applications in recent years, developers are looking for ways to make large language models more powerful by connecting them to external resources and tools. This helps AI models access more knowledge and perform tasks on their own. Model Context Protocol, or MCP, was introduced in November 2024 by Anthropic. It's becoming more popular because it offers a simpler and more organized way to connect language models with external tools and resources, instead of building separate integrations for every use case. In this tutorial, we'll walk through the basics of Model Context Protocol and show you the key parts of building an MCP server. We'll make this practical by building an MCP server that can take GitHub URLs and turn them into visual diagrams of the code. Let me start with introducing the three main components of MCP architecture, the server, client, and host. The MCP server provides tools and resources that AI models can use through structured requests. Think of the MCP host as a control center, it's the runtime environment that manages how clients and servers talk to each other. You'll find MCP hosts in applications like Cloud Desktop or IDEs with MCP extensions. Just like how a restaurant management system coordinates between customers and restaurants, the MCP host handles all the communication and processing between clients and servers. The MCP client comes built into the host application so users can interact with the server easily. However, you can also create custom MCP clients for special needs. In this video we'll focus on understanding the MCP server and apply our knowledge to build a simple, custom MCP server. The MCP server wraps around various APIs calls to the external tools and resources, enabling the clients accessing these functionalities without complex setup. There are three types of components, resource, tools, and prompts, can be incorporated in the MCP server, which are aligned with common ways to customize LLM. If you are interested to know more about LLM customization strategies, check out our previous video 6 Common LLM Customization Strategies. First, resources are your data, files, and documents that expand the LLM's existing knowledge, perfect for retrieval augmented generation-based AI systems. Next, tools are functions and integrations that enable LLM to perform certain actions, like searching Google or creating design prototypes. This is useful in an agent-based system. Finally, prompts are instruction templates that guide how the LLM responds. This is more suitable for systems that rely on prompt engineering techniques. We'll use a simple example to show you how to build your first MCP server in Python. This server will let you call a custom tool called Visualize Code, which takes code files from GitHub and turns them into visual diagrams. The link to the project's code repository is available in the video description below. Firstly, let's set up the development environment. MCP uses UV as the default package manager. For macOS and Linux, you can install UV and execute it using the shell command. In the following script, we first initiate a new working directory, activate the virtual environment, and create the project structure to store your main script visual.py. Then, install the required packages. Once your environment is ready, open the visual.py script. Import the required libraries, initiate the MCP server instance, and define a user agent for making HTTP requests. We'll use FastMCP as the official Python MCP SDK. Next, we'll create a helper function called getCode to fetch code from the GitHub URL. This function is asynchronous and uses async client to make non-blocking HTTP requests. Asynchronous programming allows multiple operations to run concurrently, improving efficiency by not blocking execution while waiting for operations to complete. It is typically used to handle I.O. operations efficiently, such as network request, user inputs, and API calls. In contrast, synchronous operations which are default for machine learning tasks, are executed sequentially, with each operation blocking until completion before moving to the next task. The getCode function then converts the GitHub URL to the raw file format, fetches the code, and handles any errors that might occur during the process. Now, let's implement the main MCP server tool, Visualize Code. We use a Python decorator at mcp.tool to create the MCP server tool by decorating the Visualize Code function. 
Similarly, we can use at mcp.resource for resources and at mcp.prompt for prompts. The FastMCP class leverages Python type hints and doc strings to automatically enhance tool definitions, making it easier to create and maintain MCP tools. The FastMCP class leverages Python type hints and doc strings to automatically enhancing tool definitions, simplifying the creation and maintenance of MCP tools. For our use case, we create tool functions with type hints, accepting input parameter URL with string format and generating the output as a combined string of all code extracted from the source file. We have added the following doc string to help the LLM to understand tool usage. Let's examine how the MCP tool functions with and without doc strings by calling the MCP server through Claude Desktop as our MCP client. The version without doc string only has text summary whereas the version with doc string has the diagram generated as well. Finally, add the main execution block to your script and run the server locally with a simple I.O. transport using Stio. When you run the code on your local machine, the MCP server listens for tool requests from MCP clients. For production deployment, you can configure different transport options, like streamable HTTP for web-based deployments. Now we have built the custom MCP server and we will demonstrate how to use this MCP server through Claude Desktop, but it also allows connecting to other hosts, such as Cursor, by slightly tweaking the configuration. We will need to set up the configuration file for server settings in your local folder, and update the path to your working folder. Run the server using the command line. Launch or restart Claude Desktop, and select the visualize tool you just created. You can now try the visualization tool by providing a GitHub URL. Thanks for reaching so far. This tutorial gives you an overview of MCP architecture, focusing on MCP server components and applications. We've walked through the process of building a custom MCP server that enables code visualization from GitHub repositories. Potential next steps include exploring remote MCP servers on cloud provider implementing security features and robust error handling. If you find this video helpful, please like and subscribe for more upcoming videos. Look forward to see you in the next one.